In case you missed it, this week I was invited to attend the esports awards with my wife. I was nominated for content creator of the year and it was a great honor. I posted a couple photos from the event and also got the chance to try out the glam bot. I think we easily know who stole the show. Anyway, today I'm back home and after speaking with a bunch of cool people from different esports backgrounds, I had a lot of time to think about the state of Rocket League in many aspects. The main five are Rocket League as a game itself, the esports scene, the content creator ecosystem, the pro player ecosystem, and finally community reception. Albeit, maybe the more vocal part of it. I also touch on some things I'm excited for in 2025, and the potential implications this has for the game in a huge way. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of rambled in these games, and I definitely want to touch more on some of these topics, so let me know what I missed and what you want to hear more about. I got the chance to play with Lion Blaze, who's insane at twos, so hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm a little cozy. I got my hood on, but um, I'm back from Esports Awards. Uh, I obviously did not win. I probably mentioned that already in the intro, but... We're out here, back in the game. Rocket League's been adding a lot of uh, little teasers on Twitter. I, I would say the biggest thing about their updates and the way they release things is a lot of people don't even know they happen because they only release them on Twitter. Which I mean is the, kind of the Rocket League main source for a lot of things, but it's also not gonna reach a lot of, oh, don't, bu don't bump me, please. I just gave him the ball for free. Ah, oh, dang it. It's not gonna, reach their entire audience a lot of people always like they're like oh what do you mean they're doing something are they making changes it's like people didn't know it was happening because they only post on twitter i think if they added more stuff in game like the little post they did more often um it'd be really really cool i mean i know that like putting the videos in the in the uh the game probably isn't the easiest thing but i'm excited about the new change i think it's gonna be great it's gonna make free play a little more fun and i think that's gonna be more than just like oh the same functionalities we're used to uh but with more players. Because I don't think that's going to work that great if it is that way. Because the thing is, is that most people, when they play free play, they kind of just... Um, oh, I messed up. They kind of just uh, hit the ball around themselves. So I feel like if it was a situation where it's one ball and two players or three players in a, in a free play lobby, I don't know how much they're actually going to pass. Because at the end of the day, they people are so used to playing free play. It's the same thing with voice chat, right? Like in that situation where... They finally added voice chat, and it was a, it's a great feature that you know people are able to communicate. But the only thing is, is that um, it's one of those things where oh, I actually messed up. I don't know if you can get there. But I'll let him take the ball here um, because it was not implemented early enough. Um, they people didn't use it. Let's see if we can get a a goal back though. We did we did kind of lose a goal early. But yeah, I think it's a great uh, great thing that they're adding like more features more often. It's um, becoming more and more common that they're releasing something. He just ongled. Adam bailed him out, though. Nice. Adam's going crazy. Do bump him off. Should be Blind Blaze here. Good control. Immediately, I'm going to turn for Duck here. See so he does. Come here, Duck. Hey. Oh, wait. He doesn't have the ball anymore. Nice clear. Should be over one. Like that uh, fake. Oh, it actually just goes in. Nice. Um, yeah, I think that Rocket League's making a lot of changes. I think it's good. Um, it, there's like two major parts of the game. Three, I guess, if you include content creation, which I, I don't. I don't include it. I mean, like we make a living off the game, which uh, which is why I kind of always take like people's complaints with a grain of salt when it's like the creators, because at the end of the day, like the game is still healthy. Um, like at least from what I've spoken to with um, hello computer. I don't know which computer that was. You might not have heard that <laughs> I'm not sure that's the thing about having two computers um, But the thing is is like there's there's the game and the health of the game There's and then there's the eSport and the health of the eSport and the thing is with um with the eSport It's not in a great spot. I will agree with that um, There's a lot a lot of things they could be doing better and I would love for like there to be sort of a round table discussion with someone like notable people and people who oh shoot i was gonna try and take that but i think i think you should have that for free the boost isn't there um there should be like some sort of round table with the players i know other games do that i know that it's like very helpful i'm gonna try and oh he doesn't have any boosts okay should be lion blaze here i do get demoed but it should be okay but yeah, I think a roundtable would be great. I think that um, also like anytime they have like an update, they really should be bringing people to play test because I think that would like be a lot better um, for like public reception if the creators and stuff um, agreed upon things more. If they like could give feedback and like sort of have this feed feedback loop where players can say, "Oh, I don't really like that. It's not really implemented the best." 
I think it'd be better if it was like this or whatever. And that'd be a really healthy thing for the game. Because then I think players would also be just genuinely excited that they got to be involved with the progression of the game. I think that like a lot of games, and this isn't just Rocket League, but a lot of games suffer from like red tape. I just screwed that. My hands have not warmed up for this game. And it is crazy how much like just like a couple days off of the game just throws me off. But we're still we're still winning, so that's good. I just flipped by accident. We're gonna pop it. Yeah, it's annoying. Oh. Aw, oh, dang it. But yeah, I'm excited for new changes. Um, I think that like it's healthy for the game. Oh shoot. Wow. Yeah, this top left. I can't go for this again. I'm just gonna back up and get the boost. Can't quite shoot it either. It is back to Lion Blaze. Um, the game's in a good spot. When I was in San Diego for the rocket racing stuff, which I won't make any comment about rocket racing, um, they said that like they still hit like 700,000 players uh, at a time, which is like a great number. Hit this to the right side here for him. It's a great number, and it's still a lot of people like actively playing this game and learning. And you know, the thing is, when you play the game for a long time, you've played it for like maybe five six seven eight years now which is crazy to think that it's almost out for a decade oh he's going that way shoot i can't really help now because i'm gonna go for this boost um it's easy to lose perspective of like what it is to be a new player and that's like an important part of any game is just well especially in, in today's day and age with how games like to become every game likes to become an esport nowadays i guess um that player retention is like a big metric and like just signups and stuff that's like what the players or the uh, devs care about, because it is uh, it is important to kind of have a healthy uh, system of new players coming and going. You're never gonna keep everybody in a game and invested. That's one bump. Come here, duck. What a shot! Beautiful finish. You're not gonna keep those those core players. A lot of OGs will stick around. Unfortunately, Rocket League is one of those games where we've seen a lot of pros and creators that were in the game earlier kind of leave or just maybe run out of ideas i think there's still a lot to do in this game uh, evidently i mean i've kept the channel going for s almost seven years now and there's a lot more you can still do i've actually got a yin yang uh like map shape i'm creating right now i've got a loop de loop map um i know it's custom map stuff but that's still creative stuff that i've like offered for other creators to get involved with i think it's a big part of the game that's missing for a lot of creators and also like there's plenty out there that they could try and make content off of but I think that at the end of the day, like, they see that it doesn't perform as well as maybe the ranked content or, or just streaming. Uh, it doesn't, like, I don't know, engage the, the people as much. So they think that's instantly a negative thing. But I've always been the advocate of, like, when something doesn't do well on YouTube or something, like, something has lower viewership, I always like to take it with a grain of salt because it might be players or viewers that never have watched my content before, but they now are interested in the channel for the future. So I always like try to keep that in, in mind. We got Tricky and Talk. Actually, I was going to play a uh, tournament with them possibly, but they wanted us vibe in twos and here they are. So <laughs> let's see if we can uh, take them down. Look at the uh, back corner here. What a pinch. So he's got low boost. Oh, I the line just took the mid too, so. Oh, the bump. I go low here. Nice 50. I'm going to stay on the left. See if I can stay with this here. Hit that a little too far. Tricky's going to probably boom it forward. I don't think he can score. He does go fast though. And it's off. Well, I was actually on target. Let him go for it. And then I'm going to play off this a little slow. Um, I don't think it's in, unfortunately. Oh, it is. It is. Um, yeah, I think that... I didn't really finish my statement too. I, I'm all over the place. I'm kind of just talking a lot about what I've been thinking about. I've actually written a big kind of statement about the game and just like how I've been feeling. Um, I'm kind of scared to post it because I think like there's probably gonna be a lot of people that like sh like think of it negatively. My opinion. I'm trying to be as constructive as possible and like kind of just like I was gonna t title it like I'm tired. Uh, just and I don't mean that in a way like I'm tired of making content. I love this game. I love playing it. I think it's. It's a lot of fun. It's off the post. Oh my goodness. And I think that there's still a lot a lot for me to do and explore in the game. I might get dusted here. It's off. Um, but I've tried everything. I've done casting. I've played pro, obviously. Uh, I've done play-by-play -play and color, which is both fun. I'm obviously better at the analytical part of it. Because at the end of the day, because I've played the game for so long, I find it hard. I don't like to fake excitement. 
um, which I think is an important thing uh, in casting, is like you want to be excited because it's exciting, not because you feel like the viewer wants you to think it's exciting, if, if that makes sense. So I've always been pretty like real and down to earth when I cast, which maybe doesn't come off as exciting as other casters. But I think that I'm always a fan of couch commentary, which is kind of why I'm doing the Apex. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time because I, I fell in love with Gold Rush and Beyond the Summit uh, way earlier on in, in the uh, the days of Rocket League. I love seeing like the personalities come out. Some of the funniest parts are like when things mess up or like, I don't know, something goes wrong or like a player makes a goofy comment or whatever. Or like the 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 very famous or infamous Ronicky, the moon is iron or urn. What is it? I don't even know what he says. And uh, it's like one of the most viewed clips on Twitch for Rocket League. Um, and also like comments like where you guys get involved. Like that's the kind of stuff I want to do more. Because, like, at the end of the day, we're here to celebrate esports. We're here to celebrate, um, like, the love of the game. And I think that, like, the World Championship should be celebrating that. I think Blast has done a great job so far. Uh, just, you know, showcasing a lot of different things. I think the only thing that was kind of missing was the freestyler stuff. But at the end of the day, that also... I keep saying at the end of the day, that also didn't do that great. Um, because of I think the format wasn't, wasn't great. A lot of people didn't know exactly... Oh, he's going. Um, they didn't really... <laughs> and they forfeit i don't know what's happening so i'm just kind of rambling i know it's a lot it's word vomit sort of i've got a lot on my mind um especially after like going to the esports awards and seeing so many talented people in rocket league be nominated which is amazing uh but obviously none of them won so i think it was like g2 as a team for rocket league was nominated uh cassio was nominated as a coach lemon kiwi was nominated uh, Beast Mode as an individual controller player, uh, Wave Punk as a host, me as a content creator of the year. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. I think there's one I'm missing. I might be missing one, um, but either way, uh, there's a lot of people that were nominated. None of them won. I think that Esports Awards is a popularity contest, um, and it is also how much you push for voting because it is every 24 hours you can vote. Um, I didn't want to do that. I mean, I, I could have. I, I didn't really want it to be a thing where you guys had to like really work for like helping me. I just wanted it to be a thing where it's very, very honor. It's a big honor for me to be in, uh, invited and nominated. And I wanted to make sure I showed face. And I think I was the only Rocket League, uh, I guess, nominee that was there. And I went to the like the conferences and stuff. That was really awesome to meet some people. I actually met someone named Onset, which if you watch uh, Halo or Apex, I just died. I think it's off. I need to pay attention to the game. Um, if if you uh, watch Halo and Apex, Onset is uh, play by play, and he was nominated for that that role. Um, oh, what a shot! What a finish! Um, he was nominated. I spoke to him in the shuttle over, and he was really down to earth. He's actually like done some casting earlier in the days of Rocket League uh, for Universal Open, which I played in uh, back in twenty. I want to say twenty seventeen. Super cool guy. I was talking about like it's always hard because I want to do and mix mix other esports uh, for content, but it is so hard with Rocket League because of the fact that um, the game is so hard. So you have like HCS pros who are amazing at first person shooters. So a lot of other games they could like blend in uh, to a degree, um, but with with uh, Rocket League, if you don't play it. You're just bad. So I think that there's a way we can maybe do some cool things where it's like 4v4, but it's like half and half Rocket League, half uh, HCS pros, or even Apex. I know Apex is teams of three, but you can, you can grab a couple players uh, from different teams. And I think that's something that's missing in a lot of other games is just showcasing like a, a mix of talent from other games. It's fun to just mix communities. That's probably one of my favorite aspects of esports awards. I think they asked me like, "Oh, what, what are you looking forward to the most for the evening?" And they're like, "Of course, the award." I was like, "I actually like. I mean, the award would be cool if I won, but I think that I was more excited for just like meeting people that I've never met before and and sort of learning about how those communities came to be. Because Rocket League was very grassroots. It's one of those games where the esports started off grassroots by the company themselves too. I mean, I know that doesn't really make as much sense as like Smash Bros, for example. This could be my net. It probably is. Yeah, a rough touch from Lion Blaze. Um, but Rocket League 
definitely needed contributions from the people that run the game outside of the development. And uh, like 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 James Bot and Gold Rush. That was a great event. It's uh, something I deeply missed. Uh oh, is that in our net? Oh shoot. I think I confused Lion Blaze there a little bit with that one turn. I probably could have bumped them. I just thought I didn't think he was gonna turn there. And the Apex is one of those things where I want to bring back the grassroots and sort of celebrate us gonna be in our net again. Oh cheese messed up. Okay, no he didn't. He caught it really well. And uh, got a really good shot. I I just think there's a lot of room for the game to grow outside of the development. I think that Epic Games could be handling a lot of it better. Uh, especially with like the org decal stuff, that's like, I don't know. There's no excuse for that, in my opinion. This game needs uh, those integrations to do well. And I was actually, I actually got to talk with a couple people who have worked with integrations for uh, like BMW uh, and also just the Lexus people that were there because they sponsor esports awards. I don't think Lexus has a vehicle in Rocket League, but I think uh, I keep, I almost said it again. Um, Rocket League is one of those games where a lot of the audience is younger than people who can buy cars. So it's hard to market. It's hard to market the cars to those people in a way that it's going to be beneficial for the companies. And oh boy, I'm going to die here. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's hard to market it and it's it's not as beneficial as other games like if F1 or Forza or whatever, those kind of games they can actually get direct benefits for the for the players rather than oh it's just you know a cosmetic thing and it's the same hitbox i think that standardizing hitboxes was a big no no and standardizing maps i think that's also just an issue with rocket league is the fact the casters can even talk for that long uh, about the game and stall for example is incredible because uh there's not a lot to talk about the cars hit the ball into the net over and over again. And, you know, sometimes a team didn't hit the ball into the net, and that's why they lost. And then, yeah. <laughs> Instead, we could have non-standard maps where G2, for example, is really good at one map. And, like, teams know that. So they ban it when it's that team, and it's the storyline of, like, oh... Maybe G2 got good at a different map this season, and so now it's like it's kind of their dark horse that they pull out at the last moment for a, a world championship win. And uh, I don't know. There's just so many things like that where it's... It's going to be a, a beat here for sure. I don't think I hit this. Ooh. It's going to be bad. Not been our best game, by the way. I, I'm Honestly, I'm not really paying attention that much to the gameplay. What a shot. But I'm sort of just here to talk about... I don't know, the game and how I feel about it. I think it's not in the worst spot. It could be doing way better. That's I think that's where the, a lot of the passion comes from for a lot of people and myself included. I don't know what's happening. I'm not really like what is what is this? Um Yeah, it could be the number one game in the world. It has the potential to be. Which is unfortunate that it isn't. And I think that a lot of people in Epic do care, and they do want it. I've spoken to a lot of them. They love the game to death. They want it to do well. It's just a lot of red tape, a lot of people involved. There's a lot of, uh, you know, legal battles that you can have with a lot of this. And so it's just one of those things where, once again, with games going mainstream and just all this legal rigmarole with, like, online world, it is hard, harder to make things happen at the pace players expect it even though it's completely unreasonable a lot of the time all right not cool nice bump um yeah i think that with today's day and age with like triple a games and the way that like you know these big companies spend millions of dollars to make like a tree in the background somewhere the internet oh dang it um like, they just put so much work into these AAA games. I don't really care for, like, super high-fidelity graphics. I think it's a... I'm not going to say a waste of time. Like, it is really innovative and neat. and uh, It is cool to see where we can get to with games. Oh, shoot. I'm going to stay with this. Nice. Um, but it is not necessary to make a good game. It just isn't. I missed it. Are you kidding me? I nice save. Okay, I'm going to start paying attention because I feel like I'm, like, throwing Lion Blaze's games. 
should be all right. But yeah, I think that um, this this multiplayer free play. Th I just didn't mean to take that boost. Oops. Should be all right. Um, I think that the multiplayer free to play thing, hopefully, like it has some features that are gonna be really cool. We'll see how it works. Like resetting a shot. How's that gonna work? Be a bump off here. I just went completely silent, dude. I'm like my mouth is like on the floor. Also, Rockstar is just going for triple free resets. Touch. Yes. Shoot it. Let's go. Huge. Yeah. I hope that the rambling has not been too much. I'm kind of just going off and like just talking about a bunch of random stuff. I also don't think I finished every thought that I said. But if you guys want to hear more about like what my thoughts are on this stuff, I do tweet about it a lot on, on Twitter. I don't really talk about the state of the game a lot in videos because I just like to have fun. I do enjoy talking about this too, though. I'm very passionate about the game that is very well known by a lot of people. I just want to see it succeed. Okay, we're surviving here. Over one. It's off wall. Oh, it actually goes up, which means he might shoot it. I nice save. It's going to bounce up and over two. Let's stay with this here. The boost. Oh my! A shot. Let's go. Huge. Yeah. Sorry. That's a, that's a complete contrast to how much I've been talking recently. <laughs> I just don't want to throw Lion Blazes games. I don't really care to win or lose in these games because it's already near the end of the season. And that's kind of dead time for me. Should be open. Nice. Let's go. But uh, I lost focus a lot in the last game. I think I think the the free play thing is gonna be great. I think the the arcade map people will probably complain that it's a reskin. I, at the end of the day, I don't really care about standard maps regardless because it's just the same map anyway. Like it doesn't matter if it's a new looking map; it still plays the same. And that comes comes back to me talking about how I don't really care about like high fidelity games. It doesn't really matter. Some of my favorite games are like Tiny Rogues. You guys know them on Channel Two if you watch my Channel Two stuff. A lot of the games are like goofy like. Not like high graphic stuff. That's just kind of fun to play. Like the mechan the core mechanics of the gameplay are what drive me to a game. Always has been that way. Like yeah, Call of Duty looks crazy, man. I mean, also to be fair, that's not a, not a good example because I actually think the new one's good. The Omni movement's really fun. Some of my favorite uh, gameplay in a while. I think this is my favorite Call of Duty since Modern Warfare 2. Uh, the original, not the remake. But uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it doesn't really matter. Like, it could be the same movement that the game has, the same, like, gunplay, but look like Modern Warfare 2 graphics, and I would be just as happy. If not happier because of nostalgia. But, like, it, it does not change how I feel about a game. I don't care about graphics. Maybe some, some people do. I think that that's actually a case that people some people really do. But I... I don't think it, it it hurts the integrity of a game for me. The ecosystem, like, back in the day, people just had... That's a really good save. Um, back in the day, people just had to make games and release them as full, full products. And that was it. It was a physical copy that you had to buy. And then you have to depend on it being good. And obviously, Ocarina of Time had, like, weird glitches that have become, like, deeply rooted in the culture. Okay. Deeply rooted in the culture of, of speedrunning, because a, a lot of the glitches and like the hess, like which is like, where you hit a, like, you you roll into a bomb and it rolls you like a million miles an hour around the around the map, like that stuff is is now like deep rooted. And look, some of the most fun things in the game to speedrun are mistakes or glitches or bugs. Gaming should never take itself like that seriously, in my opinion. I mean, I know esports are huge. I know that it's like a big competitive thing and it's like a lot of money and it's very serious, but at the end of the day, it, it is just a video game. People just, everything, everything seems like every game that comes out, it's like, can we make an esport out of this? There's a lot of games that I don't necessarily agree should like work in a format. I'm not a big fan of like the BRs or like the battle Royale um, format where it's like a, a bunch of teams playing at the same time. I think there's a lot of RNG to that, which I mean, a lot of games and a lot of like even like football or whatever there's rng sure like people are making decisions 
Hashtag we are not Fortnite, by the way. <laughs> That's a big thing on Twitter right now. There's a lot of people tweeting about that. I don't know if it's still a thing, probably by the time this video comes out. It probably is. I mean, I can appreciate that people do not want, you know, the game to... Oh, it's a great shot. Do not want the game to just become like a sub-genre of Fortnite. I think that there's a lot of people that do play Fortnite and Rocket League together. You gotta remember that the casual like player base is a giant group of people. It is a big number. That's why the outspoken creators and people who are like on Twitter and are very invested in the game, yes, their opinions matter too. I'm one of them, and I I I just wanted to see the game do better. Um, but at the same time. Like, the ones that are just playing the game casually, they probably love the game. They probably, like, think that the, the arcade stuff that's coming out is really cool. They're just excited to play the game. Probably my net here, isn't it? Oh! I missed twice! <laughs> but it, it's, yeah, it's, it's important to remember that the casual player is a majority of who they're targeting when they do things like game updates. Rock League at its core is a great game. It really doesn't need UE5 to be a better game. Um, but obviously, it would elevate it and it would allow them to do more game modes. I think that's a big thing that I, I miss. Like, there's a lot of poor reception of, like, Ghost Hunt. And I've recently showcased that that it's it's still a fun mode. If, if like, oh, God, it went up. Is that just in their net? Nice shot. It's still a fun mode if applied properly, or also in the new skill level of players, it plays out better. I think the original map that was used for that game mode was horrible, and that's why people hated it. It also wasn't poorly explained. I think tutorials for modes would be great. I think that like a lot of people... Oh, wow, this guy's going off, man. This guy took a huge break, by the way. Lion Blaze took a huge break. Obviously, he's been well-known in ones for a long time that he's a good 1v1 player, but he's just come back and just dominated the leaderboard. I'm just going to go for the boost here. Because he can't do anything here. Dead. There we go. I can't see the ball. Oh, my. That's a little hard to get to, but maybe I can get there. Bang. Good finish. Um, it's just crazy how, how good he stays. I know this has been a lot of words. A lot. I've been, like, rambling on about a different things. Um, if there's any, like, I guess, categories or topics... Okay. Yeah, that's what I forgot that happens in this game is when people are down, they will do do that. It's been like four days since I played. I gotta keep that in, keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, if there's any topics that you, want, you guys want me to focus on more, or like go into deeper detail, I will definitely do that. Get this boost if I can. Avoid the demo. Mid. Keep that close to him. It's a good first touch. Rocks is gonna have that. Let's finish it off with just pure gameplay here. Uh, I don't even know where to go with a lot of the conversations. I just messed this up. I'm going to fake this. He's going to go again. Nice touch. Really good follow-up. He's going to flick this. Might just go. It might just be in. Ooh. It's like line blazes up. I'm going to take this back corner here. Let me just take it back. Why do I let him do that? That's crazy. I shouldn't do that because I know he's going to try and just dunk on top of the ball. A lot of people dive on those and I just just fake him because he's going to look silly. I hit that forward. It's actually give, giving rocks is a good option though. No. <laughs> Either one of us clearing that is fine. Okay, honestly, I, I was doing better when I wasn't ta talking about the gameplay. That's my problem. A lot of times I like focus hard on the gameplay and I'm like, overthinking but if i just like vibe and talk it seems to just be like where when i'm not recording i kind of play closer to that because when i'm recording i'm not playing nearly as good as i usually can but i still try i think rattles talked a lot, a lot about that recently should be okay give me this boost oh i bumped him Wait, Lion Blaze pushed for us. Should be okay. Gets the boost. And this boost will actually spawn perfectly for me. All right, let's finish this off. This this final game here. Bump him. Woo, he's just finishing himself. Let's go. Dude, this guy's going crazy. He's almost a 1,000 points. I've been, like, so off this game, but that's okay. That, that happens. Um, I do hope the game 
goes crazy next year. I've heard some good things. I can't say why or who I've heard that from, but I know that I'm like, I'm like pulling a slasher by saying, listen, I know I didn't get the boost here. This is really bad. Um, I know that I know information that you guys don't. Let me just say next year is uh, the 10th anniversary for Rocket League. So let's hope they do something huge for that. Maybe they will. I don't know. I'm I'm not even saying I know that. I don't know for a fact. I should have known he was going to just turn on me there. That's annoying too. I could have double jumped there and just easily blocked that. I, I'm like not paying attention to this game. I need to like focus up. Here we go. You lock in. You didn't get the boost. Woo! I take the boost. Unfortunately, my teammates gonna have nothing. Gonna boom it forward. Nice save. Keep it up. I dare you. All right. Let me lock in. Final overtime. That is not me locking in. I'm I'm backing out. Woo, okay, that was a little scary. A little early dive from Lion Blaze, but we're good. I'm just gonna clear. So hopefully that gives Lion Blaze some time to get the boost. A little scary. Don't spawn for him, please. Should be okay. Oh, he's panicking though. It's gonna be in our net. Okay, they missed. A little scary. I think I was many paths as I can. A little scary again. They're trying to do a starve here. This team has like no boost. What the? Oh, so awkward. Is that my net? No way. They. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's such a bad way to end, man. I should have had that. He actually faked the fast shot. Oh well. It is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode though. I, I just wanna I just want to mention that I I think positively of the game still. I think there are things that they're not doing right. I've always been very critical of Rocket League. I think it's very clear. I've I've had my opinions. And there are a lot of people within the space of Rocket League development that share the same sentiment. I hope that is known. Uh, they can't obviously publicly speak about that because it's their company. Uh, but they they know that there are frustrations. They understand it. Um, they're trying very hard to do their best where they can and apply what they want to do uh, to the game. Uh, so yeah, I, I I think that we're on a better trajectory now. Maybe not on the esports side. Uh, I'll get into that in a different video. There's a lot to talk about with esports. I'm not really... It's funny because I just went to the esports awards. Uh, but I don't feel like I'm that involved with esports as much as I used to be with this game. And I kind of want to be. So hopefully uh, next year is a change for that. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, have a great day. And I'll catch you in the next one.